Hello and welcome to part two of our UE5 AI tutorial series. In the last part we set up our character and the basic blueprints that we need for that character and in this episode we're going to talk about the behavior tree, explain how it works and the different functions it can use. So let's get started and take a look. So for AI to actually take advantage of all the behavioral systems we could apply to it, we really want to make use of the behavior tree system. So rather than having our character using AI move to in their character class, we're going to delete this and just put in a behavior tree instead. This allows it to have decision making done by the, uh, its AI and decide on what it wants to do. So let's create our first behavior tree. You're going to right click, go to AI or artificial intelligence and choose behavior tree. We're going to call this one BT underscore and we're going to call it NPC. So behavior tree for NPC. Now you could make multiple behavior trees with different types of behavior, uh, which we'll go through later on, but for now we just need this one. Now alongside a black uh, a bit a uh, behavior tree, we also need a blackboard. The blackboard is a tool that allows our tasks inside of our behavior tree to communicate with one another. So to create one, we go to the AI and choose blackboard, and we're going to call this one BB underscore NPC. Okay, now when you first make your blackboard and your behavior tree, you first want to open up the behavior tree and you just want to confirm that your blackboard asset has been set correctly over here on the right, this behavior tree setting. If it doesn't appear here, just choose it from the drop down. But if, it is, if there's only one in the whole entire project, then it usually assigns the correct one. You can toggle back to, back and, uh, to and from your blackboard, sorry, over here in the top right by changing this option here. So a behavior tree starts off with a root and it's a top down mechanic. And that means that it's gonna start the root and then go down and like a flow chart and into the next node, the next node, the next node. So the different nodes I start off with are composites. You've got selector, you've got sequence, and you've got simple parallel. A sequence is gonna be have a series of tasks attached to it. If the first task is successful, it will do the next task in the row. If that's successful, then it'll do the next one and so on and so forth. However, if one of those tasks fail, then the whole sequence stops and it considered a foul. Now the inverse of that is a selector. So again, we'll pick the first one on the left. If it succeeds, then it will not carry on at all. It will stop and consider the whole thing a success. If it fails, then it can go back up to selector, and then it'll choose the next one in line. And so on and so forth until they've all been used up. If they've all been used up and no, still not success, then the whole selector will fail. Where simple parallel is different, it has two drop downs here. The f first one, the purple one, is a single task that you can add to it. And the next one could be anything you like. It could be another behavior tree, it could be selectors, sequences, another simple parallel, whatever you want. And what it'll do is it'll loop whatever's attached to this gray part whilst it is completing the purple part. Well, today we only need to write about the sequence and selector. So I'm gonna get rid of the simple parallel and just have this set up. This is the typical setup that you normally have with behavior trees at the start, and then they kind of evolve from there, but this is usually a good starting point to do. So for our first task, we're going to make the character run uh, to a random location in the map. Now for that, we're going to create our own custom task. So up top, you'll see new task as a button. Click on this. When you do, it'll ask you to name it and save a location. I'm going to create a new folder here called tasks. And the name of this one is going to be BT task move random location and you'll open it up so a task consists of a number of functions and you'll see them over here in the override you've got abort execute and tick tick you should probably know about already it happens on the tick execute is basically the begin play of this uh, task node so it's the first one gets called when it starts up and the abort basically is when it's cancelled or aborted in any kind of shape or form so we're going to choose the execute AI version. The AI version and the other version differ in that with the regular version, you don't get the controller passed through. Okay, so a little bit more information comes through in this one. OK, 
Okay, so we're going to do a random location. And the best way to do random locations when you're working with AI in particular is the node of get random point uh, in reachable radius. Or get random reachable point in radius. There we go. So the difference between the reachable one and the navigable one, if I go back to my nav mesh and hit P, this green area up here is considered navigable. Okay, it's a, nav it's a valid nav mesh. However, it is not considered reachable from this person's point of view because it cannot reach that without any assistance. So that's the two differences between the things. If you want the NPC to be able to reach that location, you want to choose reachable. So on our node here, we have to give it an origin. The origin is going to be the controlled pawn's actor location. I'm going to take controlled pawn, get actor location, and plug that in. We then have a radius. This is how far it will look for a random point. I'm going to promote that to a variable. And I'm going to make that variable instance editable. We'll go through why in a moment. Then it's going to output here a location variable and a boolean saying it whether or not it was successful. So we're going to put that into a AI move to node. So similar to the one we used last time. We're going to plug that in. The pawn is this controlled pawn. We're going to drag that across. And the destination is our destination from that. In you want acceptable radius, you can make that a variable as well. And again, promote that to variable. Um, but, sorry, um, instance editable as well. And then when it's finished, you're going to get on success, on fail, and a movement result. Now, a task, will when it, when the, uh, it goes into a task in that behavior tree, it will not leave that task until it's been told to do so. So a lot of problems I've seen from people is that they forget to finish the execute of a task, and therefore their task will never stop running. So on success here, I'm gonna drag out and do finish execute. And we'll tick the success box. Now there's also on fail, and we're gonna do the exact same thing again. But we're gonna tell it that it was finished execute, but it was unsuccessful. There's not aborting it, it's just saying you're finished, you just weren't successful at it. Hit compile and save that. Okay, and that's all we've got to do here. We're going to go back to our behavior tree. And on our sequence here, we're going to drag out and do BT task move random location. Now, because I made those two variables instance editable, you'll now notice I've got the option to change these values on this node. I can change the radius and the acceptance radius. So in radius here, I'm going to change that to 1500. And accepted radiance, radius will do as 100. And you see the changes here reflected on the node itself. So we're going to hit save there. And go ahead and push play. So now nothing's going to happen just yet. And that's because we haven't yet told it to use our behavior tree. We've designed it. We haven't told it to run that behavior tree yet. And that's handled by the AI controller class. Let's go into the AI NPC and go to the begin play event. And we're going to do a very simple node just called run behavior tree. So at any point in the game, if you want AI to do something different, you just call this behavior tree and tell it which behavior you want it to run. We've only got one obviously, so we'll just use that one. Well, save. So now if I push play, you'll see him running about into a random location. Okay, and that is behavior trees and tasks. There we go, we've now taken a brief look into the behavior tree system and how it works. In the next episode, we'll go through the perception system and how to use it to make the character more aware of its surroundings around the player and the environment around it. So you can join us in that next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley where you can watch all my episodes early before everyone else from just $1 a month. Massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for the continued support. And please make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.